So let's talk a little bit about DLSS 3 and even the new FSR 3 that's coming out. There's no way around it. These technologies are going to be very important in GPUs going forward. A lot of people do not like that it's so-called fake frames or interpolated frames, but in reality, that's what it is. And there are other little software tricks like, you know, NVIDIA Reflex or like the Radeon, you know, uh, anti-lag that help to mitigate some of those latency issues. But if we're using it today on like an RTX 4060 Ti, for example, a GPU that hasn't really gotten all that many good reviews, does it give you like a noticeable difference in performance? Well, let's find out. So I threw a 4060 Ti. This is the eight gigabyte Founders Edition version. First game, Ratchet and Clank. This is a game I've been enjoying playing and on the 4060 Ti you can actually do DLSS 3 which I usually put on quality. So if we start off without any type of upscaling technology we can see that the game certainly does struggle a pretty decent amount. I mean sometimes you may be like 20-30 frames per second. It's definitely not really very playable. This game has ray tracing and remember this is at 1440p with basically all of the graphics settings maxed out. The CPU here is a 13900KS, 32 gigabytes of RAM, so definitely very nicely spec system. We're not really going to find that bottleneck nearly as much on the CPU as on the GPU side where that applies. So at 1440p, you definitely struggle if you want to max out all of the settings. If you want to reduce some of the settings, maybe instead of, you know, the very high or ultra, you can bring it down to high, maybe even medium, turn off ray tracing. You still get a pretty nice looking game, but then of course you're cutting out a little bit of that eye candy. That's also something else you can do aside from DLSS. If you turn on DLSS 3, for example, on quality, you do get, in my opinion, a more playable experience. Now, the 4060 Ti is still going to be a bit limited by that 8 gigabytes of VRAM, so you may go up to 40, maybe 50 FPS, depending on the scene that you're in, but it's certainly more playable, and it's certainly more smooth. Now, if you change a few more settings, you can easily get that to around 60 frames per second, which is really the minimum that you want to be sort of aiming for on these type of games. Ratchet and Clank is certainly a bit demanding, especially with ray tracing, but if you can sort of tune in these settings and use DLSS, I think in this case, it definitely improves the experience. If we go to a game like Cyberpunk, where DLSS 3 has been you know, fairly important, because that's also a very heavy ray tracing game, without any type of upscaling, the 4060 Ti, especially if you want to do like ray tracing ultra at 1440p, that's not really the domain of this GPU. It should be more focused on 1080p, maybe like high settings or something like that. But for today's case, we're going to put it ray tracing ultra it's not really going to be the best out of the box without any type of upscaling. But if you do use DLSS 3, even on quality or maybe balanced, I think the game still looks really good and you do get a considerable better gaming experience. Now, obviously, the higher frame rate that you start with, the better the result will usually be with upscaling. But here, it's really not that bad and it certainly adds to the experience and it gives you much more playable frame rates. So it can certainly apply in all of these games that we're looking looking at. Something like Hogwarts is going to be the same thing. It's going to be very choppy on the 4060 Ti when you're just trying to play without any type of upscaling, especially around Hogsmeade, which can also be very CPU intensive, but you're going to get considerably smoother performance when you turn on DLSS 3. I like to put it on quality, sometimes on balance, depending on the type of performance that you want. It certainly smooths it out a decent amount. You still get those occasional spikes of, you know, little stutters and micro stutters, but with DLSS on, it's considerably less, especially in a game like Hogwarts, which is a fairly demanding game, once again with ray tracing. All of these games are giving us ray tracing level performance, as well as ray tracing level drawbacks. The performance penalty, obviously, can be pretty major with ray tracing. You can just turn that off, and automatically you're going to get a lot better performance, but here we're pushing the 4060 Ti at 1440p as much as we can. Same idea continues in Hitman 3. If you don't do any type of upscaling, the frame rate 
although it's not like technically too choppy, it's too low to be enjoyable and it feels choppy. It's like 20, 30 frames per second. When you turn on DLSS 3, even on quality, with frame generation, obviously all of these examples that I've been given have been, you know, frame generation is on, the so-called fake frames. You do get a lot smoother gaming experience. It just feels more responsive, more alive, taking more advantage of, you know, high refresh rate monitors, and it doesn't feel like it's slowing down or lagging or anything like that. So in these games, especially Hitman, three i think it's certainly you can make a case that in pretty much every every single game that we've looked at it's certainly improving the performance of the game where a 4060 ti will traditionally you know really struggle with some of these frame rates with the lss3 it at least smooths it out there's some games where it's not even going to help there but at least in these games the lss3 in my opinion does seem to smooth it out a bit more so having looked at these Hopefully, in the future, NVIDIA and AMD give us still powerful GPUs for when, you know, upscaling isn't going to be the answer, but the technology is also going to rapidly improve, in my opinion, especially now with the competition for FSR 3 and DLSS, you know, 3.5, as it's called now, with the, you know, ray reconstruction and, you know, how NVIDIA is developing that type of technology. That should improve at a pretty steady pace since NVIDIA has people that are working on these technologies. They want to do a lot with AI, so it only makes sense. And in the future, I think we're likely going to get a little bit weaker GPU hardware but maybe a lot better software technology on that side. I'm not sure if it's going to balance out. Obviously, gamers want really powerful hardware and great software, so we'll see what happens, but it does work decently enough in these games. Not every game supports it, but you can, you know, many other games with the LSS3, like Plague Tale, Requiem, games like that. I played through the entirety of Hogwarts, basically with the LSS3 on quality, and it made it a pretty nice experience overall. Didn't really notice too many artifacts or too many issues, which can be a drawback of DLSS 3. It's not perfect. Aside from the latency that you do get, you do get sometimes some artifacting, sometimes the, the UI, like the text, won't appear correctly, but that certainly improved over the last several years, the last year, you could say, that DLSS 3 has been implemented in more and more games. So, we're going to see where it goes. I mean, at this point, you can't say that you don't want to use it because a lot of games are going to make you use it for a better experience because they're not going to be as optimized. And it's just something that NVIDIA is packaging with all of the GPUs. Fortunately, I think the days of like just GPU brute force are probably over and GPUs are going to rely more on the little software tricks to make up for any shortcomings like in, in the VRAM, the memory bus, things like that that are going to be usually important in the past, but maybe in the future, if it can be melded well with software, maybe the experience will stay good while the GPUs become more efficient and things like that. All right, guys, so let me know what you think. Are you a fan of these upscaling technologies or are you going to pass for as long as you can until they get really good? Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.